Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be doing a species spotlight on our Drosera andersoniana over here. So let's start the video. Okay guys, before we start the video, I just want to talk about something. At the time of recording, we are 11 subscribers away from reaching our 1000 subscriber goal and I am so excited to get there with you guys and I really just want to say thank you guys so much for watching our videos. Thank you so much for talking to me in the comments. Thank you so much for reaching out to me on Instagram, talking to me, asking for help, giving me advice, suggestions, just talking about all of the different things that we focus about on this channel and that is carnivorous plants. Really guys, thank you so much. You don't know how much this means to me. And really, I'm so glad that we are able to have reached this milestone together. I really didn't expect the channel to start growing so quickly. Um, really, in the past couple of months, the channel has kind of taken off and really, I'm so thankful for you guys to actually allow me to have this platform to share the love of carnivorous plants with you guys. So really guys, thank you so much and I hope that you enjoyed today's species spotlight on our Drosera aramae. So let's start the video. Okay guys, so we're focusing on Drosera aramae today. This is a tuberous Drosera that is native to Western Australia. As you can see in this picture, all the little dots are over, obviously, in the west of Australia. But there's one little red dot that's on the east and like, I don't know if it's really accurate. Maybe some of you guys who know more about Drosera phylogenies and this spread across Australia will know more about this than me. But as far as I know, they are native to Western Australia. And this plant was actually described in 1909 by a dude called William Fitzgerald. Yeah, this plant has been around for quite a while. Obviously, they've been around since whenever it was that they evolved, but you know what I mean. Because these guys are tuberous drosera, just like all the other tuberous drosera, they are winter growers. So that means that in the winter time, it rains and then this is when they have access to water and obviously this is when they start growing in winter. And just letting you guys know, if you stick around at the end of the video, we will be feeding our Drosera Arame just like we do on all of our species spotlights and we will do a time lapse on that. Hopefully this time we don't get a crazy ant that completely destroys the plant and overpowers it. I still feel sorry about the little ant but she's outside now. She's eating grains and doing whatever. These flies are everywhere, man. Yeah, as I said, that ant is outside eating grains, killing bugs, whatever ants do out there, she's busy doing it, so she is good. Hopefully this time, one of the insects that are actually looking like it's dead will actually be dead. I don't want to really like hurt an insect and make it struggle like that again, guys. So let me change the camera around so you guys can actually see this trust for Aramae up close. It's actually very, very pretty. Guys, we just, we just gained another subscriber. Check this out. Can you guys even see what, oh, okay, there. 990, so we just gained, we gained one subscriber. So thank you to that guy. Okay guys, so here is our Drosera Andersoniana. I kind of put the camera below the plant so you can kind of see it a little bit better. You can see how flat it grows. It really is just a small rosetted Drosera. And you can see it right there. Look how beautiful those traps are. Long and round with a beautiful stickiness on the ends which is what deceives the insects and gets them caught because they think it's food, but it's actually not. And this is how they're looking for now. But what actually happens is that later on in the season, they completely change how they look. So as I said, these guys, they obviously are small and rosetted like this. But what happens is that later on in the season, around August, September, and essentially the end of winter, they start to flower. So what happens is that Instead of them growing rosetted and flat like this, they send a stolon out up from the ground and at the end of the stolon will obviously be the flowers. But the very interesting thing is that they actually conserve some energy by creating this flower stalk. So what exactly do I mean? Well, obviously, you know, flowering and making a big ass flower stalk like this coming out the ground is obviously very energy expensive. So they use a lot of energy to create that flower stalk. But what they also do is that they put traps on the flower stalk. This means that although they're wasting energy flowering, they're still getting some of that energy back. They're recouping some of that energy by having traps on the flower stalks. And this will obviously catch some insects and give them energy back. 
So it's very, very clever in the way that they've come around to you know, flower and still catch insects at the same time, even though they are rosetted for most of their time or maybe half of their time in their growing season. And here she is from above, guys. Look how beautiful she is. You can see how dark red this one is compared to maybe this one here. And I really love the difference in colors. These guys are obviously genetically different because if they were the same genetically, they'd all have the same coloration, you know, just like these guys here. They must have very similar genetics. But this one's obviously much darker and it's very, very pretty. But the reason why I actually, oh, sorry, I just hit you guys on the head there. I want you guys to look at the petioles. The petioles are these long little bits here and at the end is obviously the rest of the leaf. But what is so interesting is that they are obviously long and you can see that there's old traps there and the new traps there. So what does this long petiole really mean? Well, if you had to look at something like a Drosera spatulata, their new leaves oftentimes fall on top of the old leaves. So this means that the old leaf is kind of rendered useless, you know? If an insect were to land on this plant, it would land on the new leaves and obviously the old leaves would not have any chance to kind of grab that insect. But these Drosera andersoniana have kind of combated this by having these long petioles reach further out than their old traps. And this actually means that they can have old traps in the middle and new traps further outwards, which means that all of the traps that they have created so far are still useful and they will still catch insects. That is super, super interesting that they have evolved and adapted the strategy to, you know, obviously catch insects without wasting any energy on old traps and making them useless. That's very, very ingenious by these guys. But this is the funny bit. So obviously these guys, they, you know, they, they rosette, they grow low on the ground like this. So when I am outside busy organizing all our pots, making sure we don't have long ones next to each other so they don't fall on top of each other and make a big mess. I generally put low laying rosetted structure like this in between so I can space them out easier without wasting, you know, just an open space with nothing in there. And obviously what this means is that, you know, half the time I'm like, ah, our Andersoniana looks so great, it's growing well, you know, low laying. And then just like that, they make this stalk coming out the ground and now it's also an erect tuberous drosera and all the leaves start falling on each other. I'm like, I did not expect this one coming. It, it, it's a trickster. So yeah, it's still an awesome plant and very, very interesting because that is a morphologically distinct characteristic about this drosera andersoniana. The fact that it changes from low laying traps to erect tuberous traps is very, very interesting. And there aren't a lot of plants in the world that actually have distinct differences in their leaves. It's very, very unique. And obviously a reason why this plant was actually listed as its own species. So I've talked about how the plant looks a little bit. Now let me talk a little bit more about their care. Just like every one of our other drusters that we've spoken so far, they live in a mixture of peat and sand in a ratio of one is to two. This obviously means that their soil is very, very sandy and is very similar to where they actually grow in the wild in Western Australia, where they kind of live in loamy soils and soils that are very sandy and very dry. And obviously you can see that our guy is living in a super, super long pot. This is 18 centimeters or seven inches if you're American. It was a great, it's a great pot because the tubers live over here. From there downwards is trap, is not traps, is roots and from there upwards is the stolon and obviously the traps above the ground. So let's talk a little bit more about how the actual traps look. Guys, 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 look at this. 992, oh my God, guys, we are eight subscribers away from reaching our 1000 goal. I am so excited. We, we might be able to reach this today, guys. Yo, thank you guys so, so much. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. For your support guys really thank you so much i can't say thank you enough i want to stop now because it's getting excessive okay so i just whipped out the old trusty magnifying glass hopefully it works this time because obviously in our previous videos it was it was being very weird so let's see if it helps come on don't do this to me Okay, so you guys can see it nicely over there. You can also see that it's caught like some tiny little insects. But yeah, you guys can really see these super long petioles that I'm speaking about. And you can see how the trap develops and, you know, throws out its little sticky bits from the developing trap. And this is how they really look up close. 
As I said, you can rarely see their old traps. They're still full of dew and obviously still capturing insects, which is perfect for the plants. It helps it really grow a lot and it looks super, super good. Sorry for the shake, guys. I'm not very sturdy, but you can see the growth point in the middle. It looks super, super good. And you can see the ring of like first growth. The first few leaves the plant made, you can see a ring right around the base of the plant. It looks super, super cool. You guys should also be able to see the on the actual traps themselves, there are long trigger hairs and there are smaller ones in the middle. So obviously these longer tentacles or trigger hairs, whatever you like to call them, they are already sitting out on the fringe. So if an insect, you know, just happens to fly past and their wing just clips it, it gets caught immediately. And those long, you know, tentacles that stick out on the outside, those ones move the quickest and they bring the insects on the outside and they place it on the inside sticky traps. And those inside ones are the ones that mainly just digest the prey. And also if prey does land on the inside, these outside ones also move inwards and press against the body of the insect that it just caught and helps really firmly press that insect right into the leaf and helps to digest the food that they catch. So yeah, it's super gruesome, but it's super interesting how these guys have evolved like this. So I'm gonna put down my shaky, shaky magnifying glass now and we can return back to normal. So we've pretty much covered almost everything about this plant. We've looked at how it looks, we look at where it's from, we looked at really their watering, what soil they need, what pots they need, and you know, obviously the winter and summer care kind of. There's just one more thing that I would really like to say about these plants, which I found super, super interesting. When these plants started coming up, you don't really notice it. Mainly with all of the Drosera actually, the tuberous Drosera, you don't notice them coming up. What actually happens is that they slowly come up out the ground and they're like a clam, okay? They're, they're like this. They literally, you see the bottom of the screen is the soil. <laughs> so they literally, they come, you just see, you just see like the tip of it. You're like, oh, I wonder what that is. And you, you barely see it because it's like sand covering it. And then they, they, they do this, okay? And they spread out like this. So they come out of the ground and they lay flat. The, the first leaf in quite a few species is just flat or even just one leaf like this flat in the ground. And then it makes the new leaf coming up out like this and you know, obviously grows upwards. And that's what generally happens. That's what happened with our Arame. And it's very similar with what happened with our Andersoniana here. It came up out the ground. It made its, its, its traps like this. And then obviously the new traps come out and they lay out further and further away. And that's really how they start their growth. You know, sometimes people think, Oh, you know, you just get the plant, you plant it, and then it just goes from nothing to something. But, you, you know, oftentimes people don't really think about how the plant looks while it's creating that above ground foliage and traps and stuff. So that's something that I found super interesting, just the developmental cycle that they go through when they're coming out the ground. Our Drosera colony outside. I'll actually go and get them for you so you guys can really see what I'm talking about. The pots look like this. Okay, there, there is growth here, I can see it, but you guys can't. If I zoom in there, you can see it. So this is kind of like the first step. You just see a little green speck. The next step would be our platypoda over here. It just kind of unfurls like this. Super interesting. And then obviously further along, it looks like this. You see, it just pushes outwards and comes out from the middle. It's super interesting. And let me show you what I meant by the first leaf on our Drosera arame over here. You see right there at the base of the plant, the first leaf on the left, please excuse the bird, the first leaf on the left just comes up the ground, the second one, the second one comes up a little bit higher, and then it really makes all the little shoots coming out the ground like this. But if you want to see more species spotlights, do remember to subscribe to the channel because we will be doing species spotlights on these guys when they start growing up a little bit bigger. So let's go back inside. So there we have it guys. That is it for today's species spotlight on our Drosera andersoniana. The next thing to do is obviously, like I promised, go and find an insect and feed this plant. But as I said, you're gonna make sure that it is an insect that is 100% dying or dead already. Obviously, I don't wanna get an ant like last time because I don't want to make an animal really hurt and struggle like that. I do not know where the tweezer went because after saving that ant, the tweezers went missing. 
So what I think that happened is that that ant took the tweezer so that I couldn't catch any other ants. So I'm going to struggle to actually catch some insects for you guys today. But don't worry, I will do it. So I will see you guys in about 30 seconds after this time lapse. Okay, well there we go guys, that's your time lapse finished. I generally have the time lapse on for about 10 minutes, but I was mowing the lawn outside, so you guys actually had a one hour time lapse busy playing for you guys, so I hope that there was good movement. I do see that the insects were like captured a little bit, so I do hope that it was a very good time lapse for you guys. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. If you enjoy this type of content, also please make sure that you subscribe to the channel because we release a video just like this every single week. So I'll see you in tomorrow's episode.